What's going on everybody? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video and what we're going to talk about today is how you can actually use a YouTube channel to overcome imposter syndrome. If you're a programmer, software engineer, web developer, website designer, all those things. Let's get into it right after the intro. So you're a web designer, developer, you're a software engineer, you're a coder, you're all these titles, but yet and still you feel like an imposter. Who are you to give advice if you're very new to the field? Like you have no credibility, no one to validate you whatsoever. Who are you to give advice? These are the, some of the ways that you may actually feel, especially if you're a newbie, new, all those wonderful idiotic terms to describe somebody that's very much so a novice in this profession and you feel like an imposter that you feel like any success that you get is undeserved because what comes with imposter syndrome is feeling not intelligent you're comparing yourself to other people which in turn makes you just feel very very small and i know this all too well because i've also have felt the same way i've been in your shoes before but over time and me having this YouTube channel and doing videos, I've learned that you can actually overcome imposter syndrome if you focus. Primarily before I even get into the two things that I actually want to discuss in this video, the quickest answer if you get nothing else from this, if you focus on solving other people's problems, that in turn will take the focus off of yourself because what comes with imposter syndrome at the root of it is an insecurity based on all those characteristics that I mentioned earlier. So if you focus on helping a lot of people get what they want, you will get what you want. You take that focus off of you and you place it on becoming a problem solver, not a person that's just creating problems. And that's the bad side about imposter syndrome, whereas you just feel fake. All right. And it's easy to feel that way in software development because it's a very complicated complex profession there's a lot of high level thinking critical thinking that actually needs to go on you see all and, and society has done us no favors and making it make you feel like the average person a common man can get into this field as somebody wearing a pocket protector with buck teeth who sounds just like this <laughs> like you like you do this there's <laughs> somebody that sounds like that to get in this profession a complete dork a complete nerd somebody who's just been raised up and reading math books, textbooks all day long and trying to figure out and, and created some rocket at the age of four years old, okay? Society, media has done us no favors in portraying that in cartoon shows that we've seen, movies, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So, but I am actually here to tell you that you don't have to feel that way and that is far from reality. So. What are these two ways? Now I've given you at least one specific foundation. Let's get into the two methodologies. What are these two ways? The first way is actually going to be documenting your process, AKA creating tutorial content. When you document your process on YouTube or you're creating tutorial content, you are teaching others, which in turn will teach you how to break down very complex, very abstract, hard to grasp ideas, concepts ideologies and make them very simple for people when i was in teaching when i was in the public school sector and i had to teach english and technology to students i had to figure these things out how am i going to figure out how to make this text very visual for this person to make very visual for this student who has this big gap in their reading knowledge they're they, if i'm teaching eighth grade reading they may be reading on a actual third grade level so how do i take this eighth grade hard to understand concept about making analysis, evaluating the text, all those things, and bring it down to a third grade level to raise them up here to the eighth grade level. When you're doing tutorial content, those are the types of skills that you're actually developing and teaching somebody how to do a JavaScript functionality, you know, creating a variable in JavaScript, how this CSS is actually going to create this style. And with CSS, it's actually very, visual because you'll be able to actually see an end result when you style with CSS so it can actually be easier if you're trying to teach somebody how to do that if you start off with teaching HTML and CSS there is a visual component to that and with the JavaScript you actually see the behavior but this is just a very prime example if you're trying to teach something that's complex in those areas and you can get a, a visual benefit for the person that you're trying to teach and as you learn that in the eyes of the random person that's watching they'll become a believer themselves. They will actually see that you are an expert. Now, when I'm actually trying to teach 
these things online in video format. Some software that I actually like to use is Screencast-O-Matic. Screen recording is an invaluable tool for a programmer, content creator, teacher, and many professions. When I need to record GIF and YouTube video clips, document my coding process, and develop tutorials for my students, or do play-by-play -play commentary, I use Screencast-O-Matic. For $18 a year, you can take advantage of using Screencast-O-Matic's many features from their simple yet deep video editor to storing your videos on their server and retrieve them with the utmost of ease. Let your thoughts and expertise be heard over the best content for your audience with Screencast-O-Matic today, right now. Also with Screencast or Matter because most of the features, a lot of the features actually are so intuitive and because it's online, I don't have to be, I don't have to really be limited to the software that's on a PC or a Mac. I can easily use Screencast or Matic whether it's on a PC or a Mac. If you don't want to use Screencast or Matic, you can just use the built-in software. I have an actual MacBook and you can use QuickTime. They have some screen recording software on there if you actually have access to that. So it's basically going to be free for you. Now, if you decide to take this advice here on YouTube and that I'm actually giving you right now, and you, you jump into YouTube, you, with YouTube comes all these paranoias, comes all these concerns such as gaining subscribers, viewers, all these other things that can really boggle you down from the creation process. I was actually watching a YouTube interview on the channel Film Courage and they did an interview with Dr. Ken uh, uh, Atchity. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Ken Atchity, you need to check the video out. But he was actually giving advice to book authors, writers who are writing books and they go through this rejection process so much of sending letters out and everything else. And the best advice that he was given, I felt like was really great advice was in order to get over that paranoia, that sort of anxiety, when you get done with one project, immediately begin the next one. And that will eliminate all the anxiety and pressure that you actually have because in each project that you create and each creation that you birth, it'll have a season for when it's time to get recognized. It's the exact same way when you're making YouTube content. You need to focus on, I know this video is going to help somebody. I'm going to put it out there in the world and the right person will see it at the right time. I know this for a fact. Dudes that, I, I kid you not, like people that have way more subscribers than I do, they ask me questions on certain videos that I've already created because it's, it's, it's helping them find a solution for whatever problem they have, whether it be on a vlog tutorial that I created where they're looking for career advice or if something with Vimeo OTT and I actually created videos for that because I was actually trying to put up the account and the actual website for one of the clients that I had that is trying to get a Vimeo OTT subscription and starting their own streaming service with their series. If nothing else, at the end of the day, Look at it as th think about documenting your process as the mad scientist um, method, the mad scientist process. That's what I call it. Because when you think about a mad scientist on a cartoon or a television show, a movie I like to use is Back to the Future where Dr. Emmett Brown is um, video journaling, creating video notes for everything that he's doing. It's the same thing that you're doing. If nothing else, you're creating at least some reference points to go back and on some problems that you solved earlier to help you solve future problems so if nothing else that's what you're creating the actual video content for and it could become handy in that way but also it serves as a good portfolio and this is something that just came to my mind it serves as a really good portfolio to employers out there when they're able to actually see like oh man this guy really knows what he's talking about that was a very complex thing that we were trying to figure out and this guy's already he's really explained it to me he'll be really good to work with our team and to help us to build the technology that we actually need for our startup, for our company, our business, etc. So it's a, also a really good portfolio too. So that's another good reason why I actually advise you to document and talk about your process. All this takes the focus off of you and it puts it on focusing on trying to create solutions for your viewer who can become your subscriber, client, etc. in the future. The second thing, number two, that you can actually do in order to take the focus off of you and get off of this and whole imposter syndrome kick is to start documenting your journey, your whole pursuits into this career, all right? Tell your unique story because your story is unique to you. You wanna kinda capture and express what your experience is. I'll give you two immediate examples that come to my mind 
two YouTubers I follow, Chris Sean, who started his channel in 2016, <coughs> excuse me, and Joshua Fu. Okay, if you don't know these names, it doesn't really matter. I'm putting you on to them. I'm recommending them to you outside of this channel. Chris Sean's style of YouTubing is he takes you on this journey. Okay, he his, if you go to his earlier videos starting in 2016, he's taking a viewer on a journey with him into his his company. He, he tells you three months after he got out of boot camp, Team Treehouse. He's now taking a person inside the company that he first got hired with, what his job is like on the day. You actually feel like you're going in with them. So that's his style of actual video and YouTube is taking a viewer on that actual journey. You just really feel like you're in the actual room with Krishan. Joshua Fluke style is quite contrary, actually. He has more of a commentary, more of a story time based style of YouTube, which is also effective, but in this time, he's, he's doing what I'm doing right now, sitting in front of a camera, talking to you and expressing what his struggles was. He actually mentions about having a mechanical engineering degree and still being broke. I'm like, how do you have a mechanical engineering degree? I thought that was part of the STEM. That was in high demand. And, you know, it's, it's when he mentioned it, it was actually, oh, that's it's really interesting. Okay, did not know that. So he even talks about his struggles in terms of getting into software development, even starting a game and how he's felt at that, how that didn't go anywhere. And even after he thought getting into a coding boot camp and having some software development experience, some web developer experience, he thought it would be a field that would be full of young people, be vibrant, everybody be open. And he just, he reality just hit him very hard. So he has a very realistic approach, and I think that's why I actually enjoy listening to Joshua Fluke, and I've been actually binging on his content, you know, per the recording of this video. So Joshua, if you're out there listening to this video, give you a shout out. Really been enjoying your content. It's been very real, especially with you exposing the life and <laughs> life and a web developer parts one and two. I really enjoyed those videos. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You can take both of those styles. Find what works with you because your story is unique. That's Don't even look at everybody else. Even those that are recommended to you, don't even look at me. Your story is unique to you. Talk about what you've been through because number one, it'll expose you as being vulnerable and maybe not exposed, but it'll make you, it'll make you out to be to the viewer, to be very vulnerable and to also have a relatability factor, a high relatability factor. You'll become more human to that person that they'll not just see the result as we see in some of those highly overblown, you know, Dan in life of a developer, like, oh, life is grand. I'm just drinking coffee with my employees. We're all having a good time. I'm coding one hour a day and I'm playing video games for like five hours after that. That's not even, that's not even, a heck, even on my own job, I did design and development for almost seven hours straight today. You know, I, I'm, I'm at a leisure right now where I could just be creative and just get a project that my boss has given me. I could just focus on doing that. But I'm not just sitting there drinking coffee and talking to employees. I'm trying to solve to, I'm trying to work to solve a problem and just get things done. So that's how things work in my life right now. Now, if you take my advice here on YouTube and you do decide to go ahead and pursue and commit to this, which you have to commit to if you're doing a YouTube channel, you'll start making content that most people will, you'll start making content that more will like, some will like more than others, okay? You'll have one video that may actually hit over a million views and then maybe you'll have 10 other videos that may only hit a thousand views, okay? Now you have to come, you're at a crossroads. You have to ask yourself, do I continue to create the type of content that hit one million views so I can continue to grow this channel or do I just go ahead and continue to make the content that I'm comfortable with? Let me stick to the format because this is going to be consistent over time because those 1 million views may have actually been a fluke, but if I continue to stick with the content that I love to make and I have a consistent audience for, those will be my true fans and eventually I can actually maybe monetize that audience or just continue to build a really, really real community with them, really real community. <laughs> that's, that's funny. So you have to make that decision, okay? Things get dicey, but you can make that decision and determine, is this going to be the right step for me to do, okay? For me personally, at the time of this recording, I'm only at 37 subscribers. I'm happy with that. I'm not tripping. I enjoy making the content. I think the highest viewed video I have on this channel is a video I made about passing a skills test on LinkedIn. And I had to make a decision. Do I really want to continue to make LinkedIn videos just because that got high number of views? No, because I'm trying to actually build a real audience. I'm trying to build um be very consistent in my subject matter which is on these two things that i'm actually sharing with you right now documenting my coding process and things that i'm actually learning about certain functionalities and coding 
maybe starting up an account, how to create, connect FTP things, all that other technical sounding stuff, and sharing my journey, my document, my whole pursuits in my career, my profession, and how things are coming along with me right now. Those are the two things that I'm really passionate about and sharing on this channel, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. And it's worked out well. I've gotten very good responses from other people, and I'm, I'm already like, it's opening doors that I just never would have imagined. So also think about that with YouTube too. It's gonna open up doors for you, public speaking opportunities, sponsorships. I don't even mention that. I don't even worry about the AdSense revenue. If that's something that comes, great. If it doesn't, I have other ways that I'm making money, I'm not tripping about it at all, but I'm looking for the other opportunities that comes with it, mostly the network, because I see people as more valuable than actual dollars. Real power is in people. Real people is act the actual currency. So you make those connections here on YouTube and you're providing enough value, things will get better for you as well in your own career and your profession here in web design development, software engineering, programming, et cetera. Hope this video helps you to overcome imposter syndrome and help you go the extra mile and really building out your career in the way that you need to. The next step that you can actually take is watching this video over here, which I document about my whole DeVry journey and how it even led me into getting into web design and profession. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Let's have a conversation below in the comment section. Looking to outsmart the algorithm? Two Buddy is it. Retrieve the right results targeting keywords that will allow you to be at the top of search results. TubeBuddy also provides a channel checklist, a video tag to tag your videos properly and other features on the back end to make sure you stay winning in YouTube. Become friends with TubeBuddy today. Link is in the description.